Hello! Welcome to the Art Nibbles Studio. Today, we're going to be practicing a really fun and simple technique to do. We'll be doing wax resist with markers. Any washable marker will do. And this is what we'll be making today. I know you'll have a ton of fun. I sure did. I'll see you in the classroom. Hello, and welcome to the Art Nibbles Art Studio. Today, we are going to be learning how to do a wax resist painting with markers instead of paint. You'll need at least one crayon. I recommend a brighter color like yellow or light green or orange. You'll need some washable markers. Any brand will do. I'm using Crazy Art Markers from Hobby Lobby, or you can use Crayola markers. Anything washable will work. You can even use highlighters. They work great, and I think they look gorgeous for those. You'll need some water and a paintbrush and some paper. I recommend watercolor paper like what I'm using, but if you don't have watercolor paper, you can try other thicker papers like cardstock or Bristol paper. And if all you have is regular printer paper or notebook paper, go ahead and use that. It will work as well. You'll need some masking tape to tape the edges of your paper down. Okay, let's get started. First thing you're going to do is get some masking tape. I do a little trick and I fold a little bit over to make a tab so that it's easier to take off later. Go ahead and tape your painting down. All right, now that you've got it taped down, go ahead and make sure you press it down a little bit with your fingers just to be certain that it is taped completely down. Okay, today we're going to be doing a vase of flowers with our wax resist technique. Choose your crayon. I recommend doing just one crayon for this first project, but later on you can try more crayons. We're going to draw our vase. It's a very simple shape with two curved lines that curve in and just a straight line at the bottom. Go ahead and press again with your crayon to make sure you really got it pressed down hard. You'll want to make very hard lines with your crayon for this to work really well. So don't be shy, press down, you can go over it again, make it nice and bright. Now we're going to start adding some flowers and some leaves. I think the first thing I want to do is add a leaf. You can put your leaves and flowers in different places. You don't have to follow exactly what I do. The way I make a leaf is I start with a straight line first in the direction that I want it to go. Then. I just make an oval on top of that line. Now you can leave your leaf just like this. I think it's beautiful. Or you can also add some lines to that center. Make sure you're pressing pretty hard on your crayon or going over your lines again. Remember, we want these lines to be nice and thick That'll make it work really well. I'll show you another flower now. A very simple one you can do is one you've probably already done before. Start with a circle and then add some petals with nice curved shapes. However many petals you want it all will work fine. You can make your flowers bigger or smaller. 
Go over your lines again to make sure you press pretty hard. You can add as many of these flowers as you want on top of your vase. to add another leaf now. I think I want a leaf poking out of the side. Oh. <laughs> My cat wants to join. All right, <laughs> let's try that again. I started with my middle line and another oval. I think I want lines on my leaf. I'll show you another flower now. This one's pretty fun. Just draw a nice skinny U shape. Just dips down. And right on top, just some wavy lines. I'm going to make another one. A U shape. Then some wavy lines. I'm going to make one more. This one will be behind my leaf here. So I won't draw all of it. I want to make it a little bigger. A U shape. some wavy lines. Just like that. Alright, another kind of flower you can add is pretty simple. It's really just circles. You can use circles to fill in some spaces on your flowers. You can add more leaves where you want some. Maybe I want another leaf coming out here. You can make varying sizes, big ones, small ones. Just to add more flowers wherever you would like to see them. And have fun. All right, I think I like my flower vase as it is. The last thing we'll need to do before going on to the next step is to make sure we have our vase sitting on a table of some sort. All you do for that is draw a line across the paper, skip the vase, and continue the line. See now, it looks like the vase is sitting on a table. Now you can put your crayon down, and you won't need that anymore can even put it away if you feel like you'll forget. Now it's time to move on to our markers. And really, just color it in however you'd like to color it. Have fun and relax. with what I've colored. As you can see, I didn't really work that hard on making sure every little white spot was covered. You can really just scribble things in and it will fill in later. I also left some spaces white. I think it's really nice to have some white flowers if you're coloring in the background like I did. And also, as you can see, I didn't just color my background one color. I had fun and colored it lots of different colors. It'll look really cool once we get to the next step. For your next step, get your water ready and your paintbrush and all you really have to do is paint right over top of where you colored. Watch that, it blends together. How cool is that? Alright, go 
go ahead, color in all of your painting with your water and your paintbrush and see how it turns out. Have fun. All right, watch this part. See how I have a leaf with lots of different colors in it? When I take my wet paintbrush, I'm just going to swirl it in this area. Notice how I didn't worry about where the crayon lines were? Once it's dry, all the crayon lines will appear. So don't worry about staying inside the lines. It will all look beautiful in the end. Okay, we're finished going over it with water. The next step is to let this dry. You can let this sit and you can go do something else for a little bit, like watch TV, talk to a friend, maybe play a video game, or you can do what I do, and I like to speed things up with a hairdryer. If you have a hairdryer, I recommend using the low setting. That way you don't blow all of the wet paint in places where you don't really intend for it to go. So choose your favorite drying method. All right, great job. Your artwork is almost ready for viewing. The last thing you'll want to do is sign your gorgeous artwork. You can use either a pen or a pencil or a marker. If you have a dark place where you want to sign your name like I do, I recommend using a pencil. It'll show up a lot better. Alright, let's get our tape off. Now, there's a few tricks to this. You want to be careful because you don't want to rip the painting you just worked so hard on. When you take your tape off, find the little tab that we made earlier, and you'll always want to pull away from your painting. My painting is on the left, so I'm pulling right. I'm not pulling straight up. If I do that, it might tear my painting. And I'm going very slow. Always go slow. You don't want to tear your painting. Another tip is if you do have a hairdryer, I recommend using it on the tape because it will help the bond release and it'll come off a lot easier. So now, I need to pull down, away from my painting, nice and slow. Go ahead and take all of your tape off. And there we have it. We have beautiful, painted, with markers, piece of artwork with the wax resist technique. You did a great job. and. I hope to see your artwork posted somewhere on social media. If you or your parents post your artwork, can you please tag me so I can see your work? You can tag me on Facebook or Instagram at Kathleen Rowling. I really hope you enjoyed this class. I know I did. I had a ton of fun. I hope to see you guys next time. Have a great day.